All right, all right, all right. We're going to give it a few minutes before we start, guys. Welcome. We are going to give it a few before we start. All right, it is now three o'clock. Awesome. Looks like the YouTube channel is receiving content. That's a beautiful thing. That's always a beautiful thing. And as always, we are pushing it live to two areas, Facebook Live, awesome, and also YouTube. Yes, we have uh, one person in. Thank you for joining in. We're going to give it a few more. Uh, we're going to give it a, let's start around 301, and we're going to just get straight to it. I want to make sure everything is lively. Uh, for those individuals that are tuning in, thank you so much. I appreciate the love. And it is 301, so let's get started. All right, guys. Welcome back to another exciting and hopefully a very enjoyable moment with me every Saturday at 3 p.m. at the server room. We try to learn as much as possible together. I learn from you guys, and I'm hoping that you guys are learning from me. Uh, so today's topic is all about uh, SCOM. So SCOM stands for System Center Operation Management. Or manager, uh, it is one of the one of the applications that are part of Microsoft System Center. You know, you have SCOM, you have uh, SCOM, uh, SCCM. I mean, and SCOM. There's a bunch of other ones as well. And uh, SCOM is really it's like a heavy duty monster of uh, making sure your servers or your network switches are up to par. If something happens, it alerts you. It monitors everything in your network. Now, today's show is all about installing and configuring it correctly. Now, the last time that I did this was when I was playing around with SCOM 2007, and I was pretty straightforward. Uh, with 2016, wow, there's a lot of requirements that you need to have within your infrastructure for this stuff to work out correctly. So I'm going to show you guys uh, all this information. All right. So I'm going to switch the scene. Awesome. And before we even start, let's go over some announcements. All right. So first announcement is notes, new location. So there's going to be a new location for the notes. And I, I created a GitHub repository. And I'm going to drop all my scripts, my notes, my PowerPoints, um, whatever, PowerShell, whatever, whatever I do within the YouTube channel, as well as the, the, within this show, I'm going to drop it in there. Now, today's notes are not in there as of yet. I'm going to place them there at the end of the show so you guys can grab it. But if uh, if you guys are missing notes from last three, four episodes, episode 14 or whatever, just go inside the repository and you are able to get them. Rather than going to the video and clicking on that link, it's everything is in one centralized location. So I did that, I did that for you and I did that for myself to keep myself uh, not going crazy with all the links. Uh, the this link is actually at the bottom of the show at the description. Just click on it, and then you're good to go. Second is uh, I'm gonna give you a rundown of what's gonna happen uh, the next Saturdays. Uh, next Saturday is gonna be episode 23. Hopefully, if everything goes well, I'm alive, I'm healthy. Uh, episode 23 is only gonna is going to be about Lenovo System X 3650 M5 server. I did an unboxing slash first impressions on that, and I'm going to do a live review slash configuration in a way i'm going to be using sccm to configure this guy uh and also maybe do like a hyper v or ftp server i don't know i haven't decided yet but that's what's going to happen hopefully next saturday then the following saturday is going to be episode 24 again if everything goes well i'm healthy everything you know works the way it's supposed to work we're going to continue our saga or our little series dealing with intune and sccm and i think the last video that we did was install the the app to kind of register the iphone to our sccm i think that's what we did and but this time we are going to retrieve the an ios app and we're going to deploy it using sccm with intunes integrated so that's going to be exciting so that's the, the quick and nice announcement 
So hopefully you guys enjoy that good stuff and st you know, stay tuned for those upcoming episodes. So, and if you're wondering about the GitHub, this is it right here. Pretty self-explanatory. If you guys have an account uh, and you want to drop notes or comments or if you have scripts that you've used that I've given you and you modify it in a way that will make life easier, hey, drop it inside this repository. Share it out to everyone. It's free, right? Uh, so we're going to go over the – there's going to be two things within the notes of today. Again, I'm going to place the stuff inside the GitHub repository so you guys can grab it. The, uh, grab it. the first thing is going to be our uh, network topology. So today is all about uh, SCOM. And the way that I built my infrastructure is this. I got internet. Duh. The internet is connected to my TD340. Thank you so much, Lenovo, for, hook us, uh, hook, <laughs> for hooking us up with that server. Uh, within the, our ESXi server, we have a vSwitch. That vSwitch is actually attached to our PFSense. PFSense has two NIC, virtual NICs. One is the WAM, which gives internet access. And then that WAM is actually giving internet access to the LAN, which is a subnet of 192.168.10. You can actually change it to whatever you want. Now, within this NIC, I have uh, three virtual machines. I have my Active Directory. I have my... This right here is my SCOM server, and then I have a workstation. This workstation is our operation console for SCOM, and uh, our management server slash web console, this guy right here, and then our Active Directory. So each of these virtual machines have a virtual NIC, and that virtual NIC is actually pointing to this. That's what gives it internet access and also stays within that subnet. Now, believe it or not, I've actually followed my advice and did a little bit best practice with uh, SCOM. Wow, I know, right? Believe it or not, it's <laughs> nuts. So within Active Directory, I created a, a couple of user accounts and I also created a user group. And I'm separating the, the operation console as well as the management server because that is what Microsoft recommends. You don't want to, it, it's not like you're going to log into the SCOM server and you know, launch the management console to manage SCOM. You want to actually, you want to actually install that on a separate machine, and let that machine connect to your primary, you know, your primary node, your SCOM server, to access and do whatever you need to do. Okay, so that is the, that is basically the network that we're dealing with today. All right, I'm gonna close that up, and this is uh, SCOM. I'm gonna zoom in. All right. So this is the SCOM server, and this is the console right here. And within the console, let me close this connection because I actually had two connections. I was doing something earlier with this. This is the, the operation management. Awesome. Look how beautiful is that? I, no problems as of yet. Very basic, but the difference between what I've done with SCOM 2007 to this version, it's way different. There's more requirements, and it's nuts. But I got it up and running, and I was very, 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 very happy. So let's get into the PowerPoint presentation. All right. So episode 22, installing and configuring SCOM. So the first thing is user accounts. Yes, I know. I did best practice this time. Yay. I didn't use the full admin account with, within Active Directory and use everything for it. So within... Active Directory, I created about five accounts, I believe five accounts. So one, two, three, four, five. You can actually change it to whatever you want, but we created a operation manager server action account. We created a um, operation manager configuration and data access account. We did a read and write for our warehouse account. And I also did a SQL server account. And within OMAM and security group, this group right here is the group that's going to have access to SCOM, okay? You will also add this security group within your SCOM server. So let me zoom out of here. Let's go in here real quick. And this is actually my SCOM server. Let me right-click and where are you? Computer management. And once computer management loads up, and I'm going to go into local users and groups and groups. And within groups, go to administrator. And there you go. There you go. 
So it's within the SCOM server. That's where the group. So whoever's inside this particular server group will have access to SCOM. You need this. You need this because if you're installing the Operation Console on your IT people in your group to have access to this, and they're not there, they it's not going to work. Okay. Awesome. All right. Let's go back into the Power Play PowerPoint side. Back to the show. Awesome. Okay. So next thing is install SQL. I'm not going to go and do the step by step. It's just straightforward stuff that I did. Now for the documentation that I read online within the TechNet blog site within Microsoft, uh, with SCOM 2016, the requirement is I think 2014 or 2016. I installed 2014 because that's what I have license for. I don't really have server 2016. So there's two applications that you need to install and because I already installed 2014 it's gonna it's, it's gonna error out but I'm gonna show you okay so you put the ISO or the DVD whatever you got you want to install it into the product key you want to accept the license and terms uh, if you want to check the Microsoft updates this is gonna be really quick because most likely you guys already have a database server if you have a database server within your infrastructure great uh, just make sure your SCOM server is uh, the firewall settings within the server is enabled to talk to your SQL database within your infrastructure. And then you could just create the database over there. Now, SCOM is a is a hogger because it just grabs all the alerts, reporting and all that stuff. So you got to make sure you have a big storage space for your database because if not that stuff is going to grow out don't get me wrong you could do some maintenance and clean it up but if you want to go back three or four months later to check up status report on a particular server it's going to grow it's going to be really big your data warehouse is going to grow huge so next on that it's going to check check is going to check all that setup files uh, i had issues with my firewall but that's a warning uh but I installed the SQL database locally within the SCOM, so I shouldn't have a problem with uh, talking to each other. Uh, from here, you can either pick SQL Server feature installations or all features with defaults. Now, the ones that you want is Data Engine Services. That's the one, definitely, that's what you need. Reporting Services, because SCOM uses reporting, and that's very, very important. And another thing that I forgot to highlight right here is you need the full text, um, the full text, this and search extraction for search this is what you need as well so you need three options uh by default it drops in on the c drive but you could change it to the d drive if you want hit next i didn't change the instance i left it as the default and i made a mistake and i forgot to assign remember okay about uh a minute or two, I showed you guys that I created a SQL service account. I forgot to actually address it here, but it's okay because I'll do it later on. Don't worry about it. And then uh, I like to do mix mode. Uh, it really depends on your environment. Might you have you might have like tight security within your environment. You might me just you probably just do Windows, but uh, I like to do mix mode. And you could do the add the current user. Install and configure. This is for the reporting service native mode. So I left that as is. I clicked on next. A nice little summary of what's going to happen. Installation. Everything was successful. You could restart the machine and make sure it's good to go. And also my SCOM. I'm now logged into the admin account within Active Directory as well. So that's a good thing. I'm at, I, I have a I have an account that I created that's not admin. I'm trying to follow my advice that I tell you guys. Uh, Cause I know I have one of you guys said, wh wh "Why you don't follow? Why you don't follow your own advice? Why you're not doing best practice within your own lab?" And it's true, you should practice best practice no matter what you're doing, production or testing environment. You should do it all the time because you get used to it, and you know it's good. Good, that's good practice. <laughs> so, next thing that you need to do is install remote desktop services. Now, I found this kind of weird that you needed RDS for SCOM, but those are the instructions that are within the TechNet blog site. And I'm still reading the instructions to figure out why you need RDS, but it's really easy to install RDS. Uh, within your server, you want to go into your server management, uh, manage, add roles and features, click on next. Now, you could do it role-based or feature-based installation, 
But if you do the remote desktop service installation, it does everything automatically for you. It's really seamless. All right. So this is the reason why I picked this option right here. So click on next. You want to do a standard development. Uh, you have quick start and you have multi point. So I did the standard, which is the default. That is what is chosen for us automatically. And click on next. And you have virtual machine based desktop deployment or you have session based desktop deployment. So I picked this option right here. And nice little summary of what's going to happen. And click next. Uh, okay. So with remote desktop services, it is best practice to have at least three machines that are running your connection broker your web access and also your session host. Okay. Uh, due to me having limited resources, I just place everything in one box. It's not best practice. Again, again, I should follow my best practice, but if you don't have the resources, if your host machine, my TD 340, it's not really a powerhouse server. Uh, I, I got to take advantage of just housing everything in one box. So for my connection broker, I did, uh, the SCOM local web apps, the web access is local as well. And the session host is local as well. So you just click on next, you know, you actually click on this little guide to drop it over here. And it gives you a nice little summary that uh, the local server, which is my SCOM server is going to be the connection broker, the web access, and also the session host. You gotta make sure you click on this guy to restart, to, to restart the destination server, because you're going to be needing uh, a restart for the server to complete, to complete it. So eventually you're going to get this. It's going to say pending, 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 and it's going to get green. And, and, and you know, it's going to reboot. When it reboots, you get to go. It's going to come back into this. You're going to log into your machine. It's going to load this up again. And it's going to say it's succeeded in progress. And eventually all three of them are succeeded. Cool, right? So uh, don't really need to do this, but I did this anyway, just to make sure my remote desktop services is working. So within the server management, I clicked on remote desktop services. From here, I did a create session collection. Uh, I did next on that. I called our, I called it uh, my collection name. I called it RDS collection, right? Really simple, right? And uh, the RD session host would be locally. So I clicked on this guy to bring it over. Uh, you could give it a user for whoever, whatever users will have access to this RD, uh, RDS connection. I did, I did domain users and you can actually do a user profile disk. I disable that cause that's not what I'm going to be doing that, you know, using it for and uncheck and next create, and it's going to be pending in progress done. It's pretty simple. Close that up. And from here, you're going to click on RDS collection. And this is just me testing it out, just playing around with the RDS. And with the remote app program section, just click uh, publish remote app programs. It's going to retrieve all available programs. I did calculator, really simple stuff. Publish and it's published. Okay. And that's it. I was just testing the remote desktop services. You don't really need to do that, but remote desktop services is required for SCOM. I'm still trying to wrap my head around why you need it. I don't know. If you guys do know, let me know on the on the chat. So the next thing that you need to do, which you definitely need uh, with SCOM, is you need Active Directory Certificate Services. So this is another role and feature that you need to install within the Server Manager. So once you have your Server Manager up and running, go to Manage, Add Roles and Features. Get the nice little wizard. Click on Next. Uh, leave it as the default. Click Next. It's going to be the primate, you know, the SCOM server, click on next. And you want to click on active directory certificate service, what services. Once you click on that, you get this little wizard. just click on add features, click on next, click on next again. And you want to, um, certification authority. That's the one that you want. I think this is checked off by default. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, yeah I think so. So click on next. Uh, if you want, you could do a restart and install it's going to be done once it's completed you can get this nice uh little option that says configure active directory certificate services on the destination server so click on that this window pops up uh provide credentials i actually gave it the credentials that are logged into the scom you could change it if you want it's up to you and the only role that you have right now that you can enable would be the certification authority so just check that off 
once you check it off you got all this goodness right here now when you click on next you have enterprise ca and you got standalone uh ca uh, i did the enterprise ca i left it as the root ca and i'm creating a new private key and this is really up to you. I can't really tell you which one is best practice because it, it, it depends on your environment, how how tight you are with your uh, certificates. For me, I left everything as the default, you know, the RSA Microsoft software key storage provider with the key length of 2048. And I did uh, the encryption of SHA-256. I let the other random. I left it everything as default. I gave it a, this is the name, cool. Hit next. I validated. Uh, I think by default is five years, but you could change it. It's up to you. This is the location of the certificate database. And we're going to confirm it, configure. And if everything works well, you're going to get that nice green check mark. This is always a good thing. I love when that green check mark pops up. Once you do that, we're going to close that. And next thing we need to do is certificate enrollment. So within your desktop, you're going to right click on your start menu and you're going to click on run. And you're gonna type in at, you're gonna type in MMC, and which is Microsoft Management Console. You're gonna hit yes within the user account control, and within here you want to click on file. You want to do add, remove, and snap ins. And the one that you want to do is uh, certificates. Once you click on that and you add it, it's going to give you an option. So you have my user account, service account, or computer account. So you want to do the computer account. And once you do the computer account, it's going to say, you know, another computer or local computer. It's going to be the local computer, which is your SCOM server. Boom. And then you press OK. And then you go. Then what you want to do is expand this guy until you get to personal. Right click on it. Go all tasks. And what you want to do is request a new certificate. So once you do that, you're going to get the nice uh, certificate enrollment wizard. Click on next. You're going to see the active directory enrollment policy, which is awesome. Click on next on that. You're going to check the computer, enroll it, finish, done. So you're going to have, this is the certificate that what we've done right now, or the process that we've done, this is it right here. And the way that you know it's going to say, you know, um, for me it says BTNHD slash BJ slash SCOM slash. They're all different. It's issued by the SCOM server and it's issued by this guy, Okay. Uh, so once you enroll your certificate, uh, next thing then, okay, so this is where I forgot to uh, configure my SQL Server. Most likely you're smarter than me and uh, you follow your best practice and you probably configure your SQL Server during the installation part. Me, I forgot to do it and I apologize for that. So I clicked on start and within start, you want to go inside your uh, SQL Server 2014, whatever version of SQL Server you have, you want to go inside the configuration and uh, click on yes once the user account control dialog box pops up. And once you have your SQL Server Configuration Manager, the, the two services that I'm going to be changing the login as would be the SQL Server and also the SQL Server Agents. So um, if you remember, if you if you could like recall on the slide, I left everything as NT servers, which is not really best practice. So each one individually, you can right click on it, go to properties and go inside the login tab, go to browse and within browse, you locate whatever account that you have. So I'm just kind of scheming all this real quick. Uh, I did the SQL SVC services and just make sure you provide the password and confirm it. Okay. The correct one. And it's going to, it's going to give you a warning. It's going to say, this will cause the service to restart. Do you want to continue? Hit yes on that. Definitely want to hit yes on that. And then you're going to do the same thing. Uh, for your server agent. So the same process, you right click, go to properties, go to log on, go to browse, find your Active Directory account that is going to uh, modify your SQL server, apply it, it's gonna restart the services, do that, boom, 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 you're good to go. Now I did have some problems when I did this. Uh, the database wasn't working, so I, I had to either reboot the server or go inside services and restart the, the MySQL service manually. Okay, and the agent manually. Okay, so if you have any problems changing it, which you might not have any problems because you're probably smart, smarter than me. You probably did all the modifications during the installations. Kudos for you, awesome for that, and uh, you, you're not going to have any issues. 
Okay, so the next thing you need to do now, this is for those individuals that install Office, not, not Office, um, SQL 2016. You need to download the Report Viewer 2015 runtime. And once you download that, you also need to download the Microsoft SQL Server 2014 feature pack. Now, when I installed the feature pack for 2014, it errored out for me because, I, you know, that's why I installed it. I installed SQL Server 2014. So it didn't make any sense for me to install it. I already have that version of the database. But if you do have, uh, you know, SQL Server 2016, you need to have this feature pack installed. Okay, so you want to make sure you download these two guys. And for the feature pack, you want to go all the way in the bottom because there's several, several of them. You want to find the one that says SQL uh, System uh, Clear Types, okay, MSI. And depending on what, most likely you're running a 64, you should be running a 64-bit operating system, or uh, pick that one, okay? I uh, got them both on the desktop. Uh, I double click on the report viewer, click on run. It's gonna it see, like again, like I said, it says the lower version of this product has been detected on your system. Would you like to upgrade your existing installation? Because I had 2014, it's gonna upgrade the current one, which is great. You probably already have. 2016 so there's possibly you might not get this warning but still do it okay uh click next accept next oh, i mean install uh, accept the user account as yes it's going to publish the product information and you're done good next thing that you need to do is install the feature pack one now this is where it errors out with me it errors out when i was doing it because again i'm i have sql server 2014 but if you're using the latest and greatest sql uh, database version you, you need to you need to have it so when you double click on it you're going to hit run and this is w where the problem occurs installation of microsoft system uh CL clr types of sql server 2014 failed because a higher version already exists on your machine blah 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 yeah so i just wanted to show you guys that you do need this plugin you do need the report viewer, but if you have, if I think if you, again, if you're running the latest and greatest SQL 2016, you need this. If you're running 2014, no problems. It's just gonna want, it's gonna error out. I clicked okay and done. Next thing that you need to do is configure your IIS configuration. So you're probably saying, so when the hell did you install IIS? Well, the IIS was actually installed when we did the RDS. Okay, remember, RDS has a web uh, web host, a web access host. So it installed all the basic stuff that it needs for it to run correctly. So that's what that's when I installed IIS. Okay, so what you want to do is get inside Server Manager, go to Tools, and open up your Internet Information Services, or IIS Manager. And from here, what you're going to do is expand your primary node, go inside Sites, you want to go inside your default website and you want to go to bindings. Now within bindings, you're going to have your HTTPS and it's going to be port 443, right? And you're going to highlight it and click on add. I mean, not add, you want to edit, highlight it, click on edit to get this. And what you want to do is the certificate is the certificate that we created, that self-signed certificate that we created together, like a couple of slides back. You want to assign it to that. Awesome. Okay. And if you want to, if you want to actually view it as issued by BTNHD, BJ-SCOM-CA. Cool. Awesome. So the next thing to do is install the SCOM. Like, holy crap, like a lot to, you need to do a lot of stuff to get SCOM up and running. Now, the core requirements for the hardware, I don't really know the core requirements for the hardware as of yet, uh, because... I don't know. I don't know why I don't know the core requirements for the for the server. I, I do everything when I, in a virtual machine, and it's the virtual machine that I'm running right now has 12 cores with 12 gigs of memory, and it runs pretty well. Uh, I have I think a 500 gig uh, C drive, and I think I need I have another 500 gig D drive. So those are the core requirements that I have. I have I have I haven't had any issues as of yet with those requirements but for a physical server i don't know as of yet you could probably do a google search and just search for scom requirements and you could probably get all the needs that you know all the all the information that you need now so to install it um I, i'm doing the trial base one you know taking advantage of the 90 days 
And this this installation file is about a gig, 1.6 gigs. When you double click on it, it's gonna give you the user account control. Hit yes. Uh, you're gonna get the nice little wizard. Now the wizard is going to extract the files that the files that you need to start the installation. Okay. So click on next. Drop it to you know drop it whatever you want. By default, it's gonna drop it on the C drive. I changed it to the E drive eventually. Okay. Extract. Blah, blah, blah. It's going to be extracting the files and you're finished. And then you go to the location where the files are located. Now, what you want to do is double click on that setup file. Again, another user account control. This is so annoying, but you know, you have to keep it to make sure everything is safe, right? Click yes. And you're going to get the nice little wizard. Click on install. It's going to start loading up. And what we're going to do here, uh, remember, this is our SCOM server. So you can actually install all four of them in one shot, but we didn't, we're not going to do that. We're going to install the management server and the web console. I think later on, again, this is going to be like a mini series of SCOM. I'm just showing you guys how to install and configure it within your lab environment. Maybe you could push it out to your production environment. And uh, best practice is you want to have the management server uh on a different box you don't you don't want to have the operation console on the same box it makes no sense you're going to log into your your scom server to launch the operation console to management that's just too many that's too much resources hitting that that uh, machine you don't want that so install the operation console on a different machines so that'd be less stress on the server so for me i'm installing the management server in the web console later on we are going to be doing the report server or reporting server but i'm probably going to do it on a separate machine so don't worry about that click on next uh location is going to drop it on c drive you can change it it's up to you it's going to verify the information and bam i got some i got problems i got some errors yes i got some errors and okay so when we installed rds remote desktop services it did install is but SCOM has uh, particular roles and features that it needs within the IIS. So you need to enable um, IIS 6 Metabase, uh, ASP.NET role, and the HTTP activation service role. So once you enable this, you just go back inside your server manager and just enable those roles. And then what you could do is just verify it again. It will go all green. If everything works well, you're going to get this. Proceed with setup. Awesome. Everything passed. Hit next, give yourself a uh, management group. I called my management group NYC. Uh, I've seen a lot online as well as uh, Microsoft TechNet blog site. They like to use based on the location. So if you're in New York, you do New York. If you're in London, you do London, right? Because most likely you work in a company and you have multiple, multiple offices everywhere in the world, right? And if you don't want to have one particular management group managing all the offices, right? That would drive you nuts. That would drive me nuts. Um, even though you even have a naming scheme for your computer accounts, right? Most likely people that live in New York probably have a computer uh, name scheme for their deployments as NY-the serial number or uh, NJ-whatever, right? But uh, creating specific groups depending on the location that you're at will work great for you or for your SCOM. For me, I did NYC. Uh, you want to accept the license and terms. A lot of us IT admins never read this. I definitely don't read it. It's uh, One day I will read it. I will print it out and read it. Hit next. And from here, you want to configure the operation database. So because I'm doing everything locally, this address right here, I just typed in local address or you could just basically give the DNS name of the server. And when you hit tab, it should verify itself. And it's going to create the operation management manager database. That's the name of the database. And you could increase the database size. Again, because I'm running such a small environment, a thousand megabytes is not that bad. It's such a small environment. And I'm, I'm probably going to monitor maybe two or three servers. If you're using this to the point that... <laughs> You are monitoring a crap load of servers. You need to increase this database size. And I definitely don't recommend having the SQL database locally within the SCOM because that's that's just going to tax it hard. So having the SQL database on a separate machine with a lot of space, maybe a solid state drive will work great for you. 
you can change the data file location and the log file and you click on next and then from here the data warehouse is another heavy duty database this is where all your reporting your logs everything is housed here so again because i'm running everything within a small environment i have a couple of machines that i'm going to monitor with you guys you know a thousand megabytes is enough for me you want to type in the the name of the server and the database name is going to be operations manager dw okay uh, I changed the default location to E. And uh, the website is going to be default website, right? We only have one website, which is the default. And you could enable the SSL if you want. And from here, you could do use mix authentication form, or you could use uh, use net, uh, network. I left it the default as use mix because it will use basically uh, Windows credentials and um you could actually create accounts separate accounts that are not part with, that are not part of active directory okay so click on next on that and this is where i make all the modifications of those five user accounts that i created within active directory so my management ser uh, server action accounts my system center configuration service account uh by default it says local system change that to domain um domain account and I just changed it to all the specific accounts that I created within Active Directory, okay? So my data reader accounts, my data writer accounts, my uh, data access service, and also my action account all have different accounts within Active Directory. I'm trying to follow the best practice right here, guys. I think I'm doing good, right? <laughs> so let's click on next on that. And you got the diagnostics and usage data. So click on next on that. You can read it if you want. Uh, it is recommended that you check off on so you can check updates make sure it's good to you know good to go uh for me in the lab i just hit no and nice little summary click install and it's going to install eventually if everything works well you get all the green check marks you probably might not have the exclamation point uh you probably will have the exclamation point because there's a certain way within uh scom that you need to license your thing you you, you have to use the set um uh, scom license commandlet that's pretty weird right it's strange that they don't give you well I'm, I'm actually using the rtm version so i don't know like the real scom version will a dialog box pop up and then you put the serial key and it will license it so i haven't tried that yet i know this is the scom rtm uh, rtm version so this is what i have to do to license it close it and next thing to do is how would you manage it? How in the hell are you going to manage this? Because when we did the installation of the management server and the web console, we didn't install the operation console. So within the operation console, uh, I logged into my Windows uh, 10 box and uh, I dragged and dropped the entire folder of the SCOM. So it's the same process. Just double click on that setup folder. And... Um, you also need within your workstation, you need the report viewer and also you need that uh, feature pack. So the same things that you did within your SCOM server, you need it on your workstation. And you click on setup and hit install. And the only option that we're going to do is operation console. And operation console, we can change the path. By default, it's the C drive. And it's really small. Look at the requirements. It's only 281 megabytes. It's super small. Uh, I received one warning. It's uh, it says two gigs of memory is required. This feature, the recommended amount is four gigs. I have two gigs for this virtual machine, but it is required or recommended that you have at least four gigs of memory when you are installing this operation manager. Okay, oh management console. Uh, you want to accept the terms? Click next. Click next on that. Again, up to you. I click no. Click install. It goes through pretty well. It took it took about I would say five to eight minutes. It was pretty seamless. Nice little green check marks. Those are always great things. And you want to click on start and close, and that's it. So you we install SCOM uh, successfully, which is always a good thing. Uh, well, you probably say to yourself, how do you know that you really install SCOM successfully? Well, the only way to do it is you need to launch the console within your workstation and see if you're able to get into the damn management group, right? So quick tour. 
when you double click on the operation manager, you're going to get this. It's going to say it's connect to a server, right? Uh, you want to add the server name and click on connect. Got to make sure you have a strong and healthy DNS uh, resolve connection within your infrastructure because I've been in I've been in sites that the DNS does not work. I type in the computer name and it's it doesn't want to be resolved. So make sure your DNS is working. It's healthy. The times that I, I dealt with that kind of uh, situation, I had to use the IP and that's a pain in the butt. Uh, so put your server name. Once you hit connect, it's going to start connecting. And there you go. How awesome is that? Cool, 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 cool. So rather than me just showing you the slides, which the slides are going to be provided, we're going to go straight to the horse's mouth. So we're going to close this up. This is my SCOM. I'm going to go inside the management. And from here, we're going to go to administration. And within administration, let's go inside settings. Because settings is the one stop that you should go once your installation is done because you want to make some modifications to a couple of things. By default, you have the heartbeat. Now you have the agent. This is the agent heartbeat. We're going to right click on that, go to properties. And within here, the heartbeat interview is 60 seconds. Now the agents can generate heartbeats at a specific interview to ensure that they are functioning properly. So once we, you know, get our agents out there within our servers, 60 seconds, you want, it, you could change it. It's up to you. But 60 seconds is the default. That it's going to, your SCOM server is going to talk to the agents on your infrastructure to, con, you know, talk back. It's like, hey, guys, how are you doing? And your servers are going to say, oh, we're doing okay. We're healthy. Our hard drives are full. But if, you know, let's say a couple minutes pass and all of a sudden your SCOM is saying, hey, how are you guys doing today? I'm just checking up on you guys. And one of your servers says, oh, I'm not feeling too well. One of my memories, like, damage. Bam, that's when you get an alert. So that's the whole point of the 60-second interval thing. And it becomes a pain in the butt if you got problems with all your servers. Imagine that. You got problems with all your servers. You're constantly getting heartbeats and alerts. Oh, my God. I drive myself crazy. And within the general tab, you have five of them. You got your alerts, database grooming, privacy, reporting, and you got your web addresses. So right click on alerts, go to properties. And by default, you have the following. So these are the IDs. So it's a knowledge, assigned to engineer, awaiting, awaiting evidence, closed, new, resolved, and scheduled. You can actually click on new. And you can actually create your own resolution state and give it a unique ID. Okay. From here, you, you got uh, automatic alert resolution. So resolve all active alerts, which are new resolution states after 30 days. You can change this by default. It leaves everything as 30 and 7. But I can't really tell you, okay, all right, guys, 50 is the best answer. No, it really depends on your environment, okay? So you just have to go inside uh, settings and go inside each one of them and start modifying them the way you know it's going to work in your environment. Now for database grooming, very important because uh, this is where it gets kind of crazy. By default, seven days, you know, SCOM does its own built-in cleaning of the database. So every seven days, anything seven days older, it starts it starts deleting stuff. Okay, you can actually change it, change it to something more like resolve resolve alerts. If you have a crap load of alerts that you resolve within your servers, you could clean it up. Maybe you know three days or something, but I think for me, resolve alerts, I definitely would change that to a little higher, maybe a month, because you never know. You might have issues with the same problem, and then all of a sudden, two months later, you know, it pops up. You want to see how you resolved it. You know, so by default, seven days. The only thing that's changed is performance signature is two days. But you have to go in here and just modify it for your environment. Uh, privacy. Let's go to properties on that. Uh, look at that, yeah. This is where we answered no within the installation portal. You got error reporting. If you wanna, if you wanna help out Microsoft on fixing their problems, you know, it automatically send diagnostics to Microsoft. This is really up to you if you wanna do that. I hit no on that. Next thing is reporting. And okay, so reporting is not enabled as of yet because I haven't installed the reporting server 
as of yet. We will be doing that pretty soon. I don't know what episode, but stay tuned. Web, uh, web addresses, just go to properties. This is the address for our uh, web console. So let's test it out. I was doing something on this box. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm hoping it damn works. Ah, no, no, no. Get out of here. No reset. <laughs> uh, let's zoom out. There it goes. So we are going to click login. I saved my password. Bad. No good. And there it goes. So this is the web portal. Now, yeah, you you don't really need to install the operation manager within your computer account. I mean, within your computer account. That makes no sense. Within your computer, within your PC, you could just use the web console. But you're very limited in what you could do within the web console. Yeah, because I, I had this account right here. This account that I'm logged into, this web console. Come on. Picking the wrong one. This account right here. I, I have full access to it, but I don't see the administration part. Mm, that's not good. So definitely installing the the manager on a machine will work well for you. You can even uh, supply an online product knowledge base, which is cool. Cancel that. And then you have, this is the agent, and then the server has its own heartbeat as well as security. So if you right click on that, go to properties. And when an agent stops heart beating, the management server can ping the computer to diagnose the problem. So by default, it is three. So three misses. It's like, it's like the SCOM is like, like, wake up. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Are, wait, you're not okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's, it's, it's constantly harassing the SCOM server to make sure it's okay. If it's not okay, that's when the alert pops up. If it's okay, boom, you, you're not going to get any problems. Then we have the security, go to properties. And within security right now, we have review new manual agent installation and pending management view. Uh, you can actually do automatically approve uh, new manual, manually install agents. You don't want this. I don't think you want this. You want to um, review whatever agents that are being installed within your infrastructure. You want that within the pending console and you approve it so it could go through, okay? I think by default, it sets as reject new manual agents. I think I'm not too sure. All right. And that's it. That is it. Okay. So, uh, one of the things that I encountered, so I know this was already loading up. So I'm going to close this up. Cause I don't want you guys to think, Oh, I was already loading. It was working already. So I'm, I closed up the console. I'm going to start it up again. Cause I, I want to show you guys that it, it, it is talking to our S com server. So it's initializing. And I should get the dialog box to log into the management group. And that's connecting to the server. And this is the reason why I do things behind the scenes for you guys, because stuff takes so long. And this is the reason why I do the PowerPoints for you guys. I know, I, I know that you guys would love to see all this stuff live, me double clicking and installing, but I think on episode 13, we had such bad luck, man. We was installing .NET Framework 3.4, I think 3.5 or 4.5, and it took forever. And I don't want to waste, I don't want to waste your time, guys. I want you guys to come here, learn something new, get in, get out. Oh, double clicking and waiting and waiting. It's like, it's like, it's me telling you to come by to the show and let's see um, paint dry on the wall. I don't want that. So that's the reason why I have I have the screenshots and everything. And if I do come up with some errors, I'm gonna let you guys know about it. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you how I fixed it, how I got around it. But uh, I'm hoping that you guys do appreciate the PowerPoints and stuff. I know it's not something that you you would want to see when it's live streaming, but it it, it kind of benefits because it's straight you know it's straight to the point. Uh, we're not waiting for a feature or a role to install. We're not I'm not. You know, who the hell wants to see me double click on an application and wait, wait. It's like, that's nonsense. But uh, overall, guys, that's it. That is how we install and configure uh, our SCOM, SCOM 2016. I'm running everything on a server 2016 server. Both uh, my workstation right here is Windows 10. And uh, I think on, I don't know what episode, but most likely we're going to deal with reporting installing an agent with some of the servers within our infrastructure and start grabbing some information so we can start playing around all right so it is 349 right now holy moly 
We're going to go inside the chat room and see how you guys are doing. We have Jeff. How you doing? We have 11 strong people online. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. We have Benjamin King. We have uh, Richard. We have Tony. We have uh, Gamer. Gamer Z Unlimited UK. We have AJ. All right. Okay, AJ, AJ, I'm definitely, uh, AJ Kumar, we, I'm definitely going to be releasing the notes at the end of the show, uh, at the beginning of the show, I, or at the bottom of the description, there is a link that's going to take you to the GitHub, the server room, the server room GitHub repository, that's where I'm going to be dropping all my notes that I include within the server room, as well as any special PowerShell scripts or whatever I do with other videos that i have in my channel i'm going to drop them in there so you guys could just go in there grab it one centralized location for everything rather than having multiple damn links right just go to that location everything is there look it okay um yeah windows isn't activated yes windows okay so gamer z unlimited uk yes windows is not activated uh this is a testing lab there's no need to activate it I don't want to activate. I don't want to waste up a license if um, if I'm just testing stuff out. Uh, I think the majority of us IT uh, IT admins. I can only talk for myself, but I'm assuming a lot of us, a lot of of uh, a lot of IT admins in the world, when they're testing stuff, they don't do a license because for Windows Server 2016, I think you have about I think 90 to 60 days until it kind of harasses you and locks you out. So I don't really license none of the machines within my lab. I think maybe one or two machines within my lab are licensed. And that would be my MDT and my SCCM ones because those are very important to me. That's my active directory and all that other stuff. And my SCCM, which I'm constantly doing SCCM with you guys. So I definitely need to have those licensed, right? That kind of sucks that I'm, uh, I want to do a video with SCCM and all of a sudden my SCCM has locked me out because it's not licensed. Um... Uh, all right. Yep. Tony. Yep. Got to listen to Tony. Tony knows what he's talking about. He knows he knows the way uh, I like to do the lessons first, guys. And then I go straight to the chat and talk to you guys. Uh, we have Lewis. He says, hey, hey, BJ, hope you well. I finally made it to the live episode. And hey, chat. Hey, Lewis, thank you for joining. I appreciate it. Appreciate the love. We got 12 people live. Thank you. Uh, we're we're, we're going to we're gonna close early today. I'm super excited. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it again. Uh, I will drop the today's notes, the PowerPoint, and the topology of the network of how everything was built within my infrastructure. So maybe you could test it out within your lab or push it out in production. I'm hoping you guys, the majority of the stuff that I teach you guys or you guys pick up from here, you push it out to production. I'm, I'm hoping. That'd be so cool. If that's the case, please let me know at the chat. I would love to hear from you guys. If you guys have learned anything from me and have tested out tested it within your testing lab of my mate and pushed it out to production and it's working with no problem let me know at the chat man that's awesome I'm, that make me that's awesome that's awesome uh we got aj kumar he says i got you bj yep no problem i got you too don't worry about that Says uh, AJ Kumar uh, says, hi, BJ, can you please share one calendar for future upcoming rooms? What do you mean upcoming rooms? You, are you are you talking about upcoming server room shows? I, that's really hard for me. I can't really lock down to specific um, shows. Like, I'm surprised I even sh I told you guys the next two episodes, uh, episode 23 and 24. I'm surprised that I have that much information. I try to have at least two to three episodes ahead, uh, but I, I can't. I, I, I don't know. Uh, we got Lewis that says, BJ, before you go, would you ever consider doing an episode on switching and routing? Maybe basic switch commands. Ooh, I am trying to do that. I am... I'm really trying to do that. I'm trying to get into uh, G. Uh, what is it? What is it called? Crap. That the uh, what is what's the call that 
that application that allows you to do routing and switching virtually. It's GN something. Oh man, I forgot. Oh, that's gonna bother me. Yeah, but I, I'm I'm trying to do a little bit of routing and switching with you guys. I just haven't had the time to build the infrastructure as of yet. I know that's just me giving you guys an excuse, but uh, I'm I'm getting there. I'm getting there. No worries. Don't worry, Lewis. I'm getting there. Uh, I've got Tony. I say I'm going to reduce my MDT process. Ooh, nice. Uh, we got AJ Kum. Uh, AJ Kumar says, can you also do a session for migration of SCCM 2012 to 2016 and SCOM to 2012 to 2016? Whoa, whoa. Kumar, you, you're requesting a lot. Are, are you trying to do this in your in your job site? You want me to do the work for you so you could go and look like a champion in your job? That's, that's what it is, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lewis, I think it's GNXC or GNS. Oh, GNS. I think it's GNS. I think it's GNS something. I'm gonna see if I can look it up. Network. Network GN. Oh, there it goes. GNS3. That's what it's called. GNS3. Uh, I've built a, a small little virtual machine, which I'm gonna show you guys real quick. Let's switch it over. Cause I don't want you guys that I don't want you guys that I'm fibbing. I'm not lying to you. See it right here? Where are you? Bam. See this? That's the machine right there, my GNS3. I, you know, I've been working on it. I've been trying to create stuff for you guys, uh, dealing with routing and switching and building stuff. I'm, I'm trying my hardest, but uh, yeah, I just I gotta I gotta figure out a way to uh, publish it to you guys. I don't know if I'm going to do a local video, like push it out to the channel, or do a live stream. So I I do have a virtual machine. I am working on it. So you know, it's 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 in queue. It's in queue. Uh, we got uh, Dave. Dave says PF sense. You have you say PF sense? Question mark. What do you mean? You don't know what PF sense is? Uh, we have AJ Kumar. Can you also make a deep dive on Azure, including ARM networking? Wow, dude. A tall, that's a that's a tall tall order. Yes, yep, yep. Lewis, it is GNS three. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying my hardest. Uh, it's really hard to locate the particular. I think it's called iOS. It is iOS. iOS files for uh, Cisco because Cisco. It's really hard to find Cisco. Um, those Cisco files to import them inside the GNS3 because you have to have a Cisco account. I don't have a Cisco account, so it's really hard for me to find that. So the only way I could I could use uh, the only way I could use like Cisco products is me going to sites, you know, non non, you know, those crazy sites that think stuff is good. And I have to make sure I'm clicking on something correctly or right, because if not, I probably get a virus. So. Uh, I don't have a Cisco account, but if you if one of you guys do have a full Cisco account is and is able to get those iOS files for GNS3, hey, please, you know, shoot me an email. I would love to talk to you, get with you. Maybe you could hook me up, and uh, you know, I could definitely do a future video and give you guys a shout out. You know, because you know, I would love to do that for you guys. We got Benjamin King it says MDT and WS is finally working. Thanks to your videos. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. It's always a good thing to to hear from you guys and uh, and know that stuff is working. The stuff that I'm showing you guys work. <laughs> it's always a good thing. Uh, yeah, Lewis, if you are, I mean, if you are capable of finding those Cisco files that are able that you need to import inside the GNS3. Uh, and there's a specific Cisco model or router or switch that you want me to touch base on, and you're able to find that file that I need to import to GNS3, a legit file, <laughs> uh, you, you can hook me up at uh, my email. My email, you can find it at the YouTube channel. Just email me there, and I will contact, or you could come back 
to this show leave a comment and uh let me know we could uh we could connect through skype we could talk to each other we could try to get those files we could work and i could probably do a live show dealing with tns3 and networking and switching because i've been itchy to doing that so All right, guys. So it is 3:59. Uh, I'm gonna end it right here, guys. I appreciate all the support. Thank you so much for everyone joining in. Uh, again, uh, hopefully next week we will do uh, the Lenovo server, uh, the Lenovo System X3650 M5. We're gonna do a little review on that, live review on a server. Plus, we're gonna do some configuration. Uh, I might have, I might do a little bit of Hyper-V, FTP server. I don't know what I'm going to do on the machine as of yet. And then on episode 24, we're going to be dealing with uh, the, iOS, the iOS apps, deploying that with SCCM and Intune integrated with SCCM. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure you share the video, like the video. If you have any comments or concerns, don't leave it at the Super Chat because that stuff disappears once the uh, you know, live stream is over. Come back leave it on the bottom of the video once it's live on the channel uh leave your comments there and i will receive an email and i will try to contact you and talk to you guys so hopefully you guys enjoy have a safe saturday uh happy labor day enjoy your labor day weekend for those individuals that got that monday off enjoy it i don't have that monday off i'm still working working my butt off for you guys uh, so uh, thank you so much for joining. I appreciate the love and I catch you guys on the next server room. Peace out. All right. So how you end this? I always forget how to end this. All right. Uh, let's see. I think this is how you end it. Uh, wait a minute. Wait. It's over. Oh, wait a minute. Is it over? Is it over? Wait a minute. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait.